Hey everybody, welcome to What The Flick. Christy, Bibbs, Alonzo, you know you've been dying to hear what we thought about Kevin Spacey as a talking cat, and so you're gonna get it. Uh, nine lives. Nine lives. <laughs> Kevin Spacey's a talking cat. Take a look. Hello? Now, a mysterious man. You look familiar. I'm Tom Brand. I own Firebrand. Yes. I use newspaper in the poopy boxes and I see your face all the time. He's about to change everything. Can I just pick out a cat and then I'll be on my way? He likes you. Yeah, keep the change. Okay, cats. I'm sorry? Let's do this. So, what are you doing in there? Wait a minute. I'm a cat. I want to throw it out there. You, you've been saying it wrong. It's a talking cat. I was going to say, well, you're the only person at the table I think that's actually sat through all of a talking cat. I have a signed a copy of a talking cat. Uh, it's a sort of infamous, like, um, straight to DVD Straight to movie? DVD movie directed by David Dakota under uh, a pseudonym. And it stars Eric Roberts as a talking cat. And we had the director on my podcast. And <laughs> it turns out Eric Roberts did the entire recording in 15 minutes, like, on his living room couch. And it sounds like Kevin Spacey did the same thing. He sounds so bored with being a cat <laughs> well, in this movie. He's supposed to be like sardonic and miserable inside the cat, is he not? I wish, uh, I wish the script were better though. Like it took five people uh, I know. to come up with things like seriously, seriously? Yeah. and nailed it, which he says like <laughs> twice. Nailed which, it. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think Dave pointed out in his review, like this is the perfect Kevin Spacey role. Because is he, it? He, well, yeah. Is kind of a mean cat, you know, like that's yeah. that's sort of the undercurrent of almost every right. role he rage, plays. Rage simmering beneath the surface. Yeah, right? um, you know, and uh, what's weird is I did laugh a few times, which I was expecting zero, but everything that I thought was funny was something that wasn't appropriate for a children's <laughs> movie. Like what? Like, okay, for example, um, uh, Spacey's character is currently married to Jennifer Garner, and his ex-wife is played by Cheryl Hines. And at one point, Cheryl Hines is talking to Jennifer Garner, and she says, the happiest day of my life was the day we got divorced, and I want that happiness for you. <laughs> that was a good line. That's a no. funny line, but it's like, that's really dark for a kid's movie. I and spent, there's, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that is very dark for a kid's I movie. I spent the first 20 minutes of this movie thinking Jennifer Garner was playing Kevin Spacey's daughter. No. And then they kissed, and I'm like, whoa, what's go? Oh, oh, it's one of those Trophy movies. wife. She's the second wife. She's the trophy wife. I yeah. guess. There's nothing about her that says trophy wife, though. She's not Tara Reid in The Big Lebowski. You know, she's she's at, was it Tara reading the big yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For, for a trophy like, wife, she spends a lot of time actually in the kitchen cooking, which is no. not yeah. what trophy wives she, tend to be known for. She seems smart and well adjusted, and she keeps getting roles like this in movies or uh, like Alexander Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, and you're just like, oh, what happened to you? You're such a talented actress. What, why? Where are the roles? Uh, for mir Jennifer miracles from Heaven. Which is actually Where the, which, no 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 okay. which she's actually it's not of the okay. Christian movies it does not suck and she's actually good in it. Right. We are discerning about our Christian movies right now. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you what this movie is so strange and it's terrible but like not terrible enough. I wanted it to be really really an atrocity and it's not. I mean I laughed here and there I will admit and a lot of that is just the bad CGI. Like yeah. it's almost like it's intentionally cheap shitty CGI. So the cat looks super jumpy when it's trying to do. Stuff that is like anthropomorphized cat stuff. Did like, you notice that there was a shot of that in the trailer that's not in the movie, or it is in the movie, but they changed it? What is it? Uh, he's like, on, he's in that office and he's like hanging on furniture by his paws, and they just uh, moved forward and reversed the film a lot. So in the trailers, it looks like he's doing push uh, pull ups. Oh. He's like, must show them I'm human, and that's uh, not in the movie. They just mess with the footage, make nine, it look like a dumber joke. In 93 minutes of movie. It's funny because it, one of the very first shots of the movie is uh, uh, Spacey and his son played by. Robbie Amell. Robbie Amell, thank you. Yeah. The, not not Arrow, but the brother. Um, he's, he's Firestorm. And, and he's all oh, right. He yes. was Firestorm. And, he, and he's complaining about like he's looking at a mock-up of a billboard. And he's complaining about the bad Photoshop. Uh -huh. And meanwhile, like the CG that has the two of them in the back of an airplane is so <laughs> bad. I'm like, wow, that, that's not a stone you want to throw right now, movie. But you know what though? I kind of feel like I, I'm going to be the Nine Lives apologist here. I really I, I keep strangely finding myself telling people to go see this movie, like <laughs> if they're cat people, because it's just. It's goofy and it's weird, and I, I almost think it's intentionally bad. Like everybody in this involved in it knows better. Like Barry Sonnenfeld has had mastery 
of CGI in the past. Yeah. They're all like He's Academy Award winning people, Kevin Spacey, Christopher Walken. But I, I kind of feel like there's almost an intentional retro vibe to it, both like in the look of it and thematic. It, it like, is kind of a shaggy dogish right. sort of like, setup. The Santa know. Claus, jungle to jungle. Yeah. Like dad's got to figure out that family's important. Uh, yeah, I know. I Wait, know. Which I think I think studio executives always make these movies as a caveat for their own families right. yeah. that they aren't spending time with. But yeah, no, you're right. This movie is not like the affront to humanity that you kind of want it to be because it's not. It's never horrible. It's just sort of like. Mm, and, you know, and it, that's it, the it, problem, though. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It is it merely sounds... mediocre, which is in a way worse. I know, know <laughs> some people. Some people like to think that critics go into movies like expecting to hate them, but when you're with a, a, a movie whose concept is so stupid and just not good, and and everyone in it is is better than the material, um, you want something. You either want it to be genuinely good. Yeah. Or you want it to be so bad that you felt like you experienced something. And this is just middle of the road. This is like, this isn't even an Air Bud sequel. It's an Air Buddies <laughs> movie. Like, it's it's so bland and so forgettable. And yeah, there's a couple of jokes that are in there for the adults that will go well, over the kids' heads. That, no, it there's, there's, there's matter. more They're than pointless. a couple, though. Like, there, there's a recurring, like, the, we made, we started making a list. Like, there's jokes about castration and alcoholism and child labor and divorce, and I, just, it's like, and I guess maybe that's the French aspect of it. Luc Besson's company produced oh, this right. thing. This is a Europa Court production. Yeah, so maybe that's <laughs> like the sort of the, the European sophistication or something, but it's like, it's weirdly inappropriate in a movie that is otherwise so kind of banal and it obviously aimed at little kids. I promise you, you though, the six-year-old sitting next to me did not get any of that. Well, well sure. It's like the slapsticky cat stuff. And there, and all those jokes are kind of spread out actually pretty thin. It may, the way, when you put them all together like that, it makes jokes about all these yeah. things. It makes it's it sound like bad of, Santa Over with the course a cat. of 90 minutes. You know, yeah. yeah, no, no, there's like 10 of those jokes over the course of the film, and that's enough to point out, but this isn't like some movie that adults are gonna think is really, really funny. Oh no, it's by no means. it's satire. I think this is just <laughs> everyone kind of phoning it in. They think this is a slam dunk. Kevin Spacey was available for a week. We can do this, and it they, they couldn't. This is a bad movie. No, I think it's just a goof for them. It's a goof. I yeah. think it's, no one here thinks this is good, I'm right. guessing, right? Yes. Um, I will say that my, my child kept asking me questions about the board meetings. Why do they keep having board meetings? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of corporate <laughs> intrigue in Goldman Sachs, and that's sort of the other thing in this. It's yeah. like, yeah, Shredded kid, documents. kids love corporate intrigue, you know. <laughs> like the, the Smurfs movie, I think there's a lot of in that one, too. It's like... Really? This is what we're passing yeah. off? Like, there, I mean, come there, on. There's a plot point in the movie about how Kevin Spacey has built the tallest building in the northern oh, hemisphere. Oh, right, right, right. And then there's a scene at the end where someone is on the roof of that building, and there's an overhead shot of him on the news at stationary, not even from a helicopter. I'm like, where did that shot come from? <laughs> it's, the, where's the second? Like, there, there's a t there's no taller building in the entire hemisphere. Well, all, all, also, the recurring notion that Kevin Spacey has to have the tallest building in North America is its own you know, joke for grown-ups, yes. I suppose. Yes, he is. He's, a, he's an arrogant and abrasive, egomaniacal, industrious billionaire who is obsessed with size. A real estate tycoon obsessed with size. Hmm. Who might this have been the inspiration from for? Whatever, that too. Okay, so um, <laughs> who are we talking about here? I'm not talking about anything very well. So um, what are our numbers then? Maybe not as low as the world might expect. Uh, pretty low. I'm I giving this a 1.5. Right. Uh, this is a lame movie. It just—it's okay. not even bad enough to be interesting. I'm mm. gonna go two and a half because it's not, again, not the complete shit show you would imagine, but also not anything else. But I did laugh a couple of times, even yeah. if it was at stuff that that shouldn't be in a kids movie. Yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> three because it's just incredibly strange, and I did laugh a few times, and I know who the target audience is, and it's six-year-old kids on summer vacation. So our average is. A 2.3, and it's at six percent on the tomato meter. Our great friend Amy, Amy Nicholson, Nicholson, our great friend Adam Alim. I don't, I don't think she's alone. She's hanging in there like the kitty cat in the posters. <laughs> Adam Alim. I don't think she's alone at this point, though. There might be one other person. Okay, for a while there, she was the she stand, went. the sole was she, bearer. Was she, was she recommending it ironically or no, like no. legitimately bright? She's a cat okay. person. No, 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 and she straight had up. Fun. I'm All a right. cat person too. I like good cats. Bye. <laughs>